Hi, my name is Cameron Carlson with AnimeLocation.tv. I'm here at MetsuriCon 2024 with all of our wonderful DJs. Alrighty, guys. So some of you, this is the first time to MetsuriCon to DJing, and some of you, it's your return trips. So we'll start off with our newest friends. I'll pass the mic along, and you all just kind of introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Descent. I'm the one of the rave coordinators for MetsuriCon. Uh, really happy to be back. Uh, it's our ninth year uh, running this, and I'm really pleased with this amazing team we have. So uh, be sure to come out for the raves next year. Hey, I'm uh, Escher, and this is my first time back since 2019. So it's super nostalgic, super fun, but it's good to be back and see good friends and, uh, you know, hit play and dance around to a few songs. Hello, I'm DJ Retox, and I want to say this is my third Matsuri Con, but this is my first one DJing, so it's honestly great to be back. It's been such a great time here. Hey, I'm Medinga. Um, I'm the other rave coordinator for Matsuri Con, and um, well, like Julian said, just really grateful to be working with such an amazing team of people this year. What's up? Uh, my name is Jetta. Uh, this is my first Matsuri Con. I'm really having a great time so far, though, so thanks for having me. Hey, my name is Ralphington. This is my second year here in Matsurikan. I'm very excited to be back. Hey, I'm JC, and uh, I'm one half of Tetra Cakes. Uh, it's really good, really fun to be here. Really, really good time, honestly. Yeah. Love Matsurikan. Great to be here. Oh, you, oh. You, I mean, you get, you go yeah. Oh, me? Okay. Well, I'm Ian. I'm the other half of Tetra Cakes. Uh, yeah, first time being here. Everything's been super fantastic by a bunch of lovely people. So great to be here. Hey, I'm Mesmerist. Uh, I've actually DJed like the last six years at Matsuri Con. Like, include if you include like 2020 and 2021 where we had like the virtual events. And so, like this year, I was like, I'm taking a break. I'm just gonna work as like a VJ, which is like all the videos and stuff that you have kind of uh, on screen during the during the con. But still, super happy to be here. So, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, just uh, try to keep the mic as close as possible. Uh, just because we're in a really loud room. Uh, for those of you that are new, uh, how's it been like? Uh, so, who played last night? And which one of you guys was? Which one of you uh, folks was new? Okay, you guys want to talk about your first times playing last night? All right, uh, and then step a little bit forward because the mic's getting a little stretched. So yeah, uh, I played 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. last night. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Really high energy. I played some heavy, heavy stuff, and uh, they really messed with it, so yeah. I played uh, one to two. I closed out the show, and honestly, I had a great time. I loved the visuals to all the different um, production aspects, like how we had the dancers and the lights in the background, and then the two screens. Like Everything looked really, really great, honestly. Alrighty, and then for the folks that are going to play tonight that are brand new, you guys want to talk about that? You want to come forward? All right, go on and come forward here. Uh, yeah, I'm honestly excited to play. We're gonna be playing a lot of like you know drum and bass, our usual stuff, and uh, a little bit of a little bit of 135 house. It's gonna be a fun time. So come through. Yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best part about doing these big group interviews because you guys all feed off each other. It's awesome. So again, um, being artists, the technology constantly evolves. What tools have you used to improve your music? What has been one of the biggest musical inspirations the last few years? Who would like to join in answering that question? I love, I love, I love the, the, the slight, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a really loaded question, but a very good question. Um, I think definitely for me, the biggest sort of technological improvement that I've encountered over the last like couple years is moving over to Bitwig. Bitwig has been a fantastic DAW uh, to work, with, uh, work within. Um, I deal with also a lot of hardware sort of stuff, so it really likes to talk to it friendly. Um, so I can easily just sort of jump in, just go absolutely bananas with everything. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's just super easy and it works. Um, and in terms of like influences, I guess, you know, uh, I mean, for me, it's very eclectic. I mean, JC is very similar, but like um, some to name off the top of my head is like M83, uh, NetSky, Metric, um, uh, the list goes on and on, um, but those are at least, you know, some more notable options, at least for me. Anyone else? Okay, yeah. 
So in terms of like uh, like newer technology, I know it's not new, but uh, Ableton Live Suite just came out with Ableton 12, and there's a ton of new like stuff in there for like DAW reasons of making music. But if we're talking like instruments, uh, I still use Serum. Uh, Tidal's a great synthesizer, stuff like that. Um, but we're still finding like new things to do with these old stuff too. So there's constantly new things learning, like new things learned and. Yeah, so there's a ton of new stuff to do. But uh, influence-wise, definitely Skrillex, Eptic, Space Laces, uh, all these, yeah, they're just amazing at what they do. And I, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Yep. All right, cool. So uh, new technology that's come out, um, there's been a lot of technology around stem separation, like real-time stem separation with DJ software. Cool. Um, which is huge because it's now more possible to do like remixing on the fly. Like if you just want to pull a vocal or a drum out of like a certain song that you're mixing in. Um, I haven't personally used it, but I've seen a lot of demos with the new Tractor Pro 4 that just came out. Um, and also like kind of the rise of groove boxes. For myself, I know like music production has been hard because I work from home. I don't want to just sit back at my desk and work again, you know, in Ableton or something. And so getting an MPC or a groove box where I can sit on the couch and just, you know, hammer out some beats has been huge. Um, and as far as influences, I'm a huge Porter Robinson fan just because he kind of, you know, he does his own thing. Every album he comes out with, you have no idea what you're going to get. And I think it's cool that he just makes music. He makes what he thinks is fun at the time. And, like, his fans love it. Did you, did you bring up stem separation? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was the only thing. Yeah. I was yeah. <laughs> no, that's so cool, though. Yeah, well, the the fun part was listening to that answer, because now we're going to go into it a little bit more, is you all have distinctive styles such as drum and bass, jungle, techno, EDM. What would you guys say is the underlying theme that brings you all together today? Anybody want to uh, jump in on that one? Everybody's nerds. <laughs> like, so degenerate anime, video games, techno, and EDM dancing. And tabletop gaming. Yeah. And I think I think a big thing is just uh, like they mentioned, we're we're big nerds about music, and like we take we we're passionate about it to the level that we enjoy sharing it with everyone else. So conven the convention space has been such a great opportunity to be able to to share this music with everyone else and there's been multiple times where I've had attendees who knew nothing about the kind of music we play and are now becoming fans of it themselves. Yeah. I mean, uh, to be honest with you guys, uh, I'm a huge uh, uh, Armin Van Buren. Uh, it's my, 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 my go-to DJ whenever I want stuff. Uh, I also love uh, the uh, synth 8-bit uh, She, S-H-E. Yeah, old school right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, I've been getting the synth wave recently a lot too. So, yeah, I, I love Pilot, like that type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, and again, one of the things is when you guys are up on stage performing, how do you look out among the crowd and figure out how to keep the mood going? And sometimes you want to turn it down, get a little more slow, and then ramp it back up and keep that pace going. How do you guys make sure you're reading the crowd right? Who wants to jump on that one? All right, all right. I, I think for me, it's not really about like reading the crowd. I think it's more them seeing me have fun will let them like you know have more fun, right? And so that's I think that's the biggest thing is like showing that you're into it, showing that you have passion, showing that you care about the music you're playing, right? That's more important. Anyone else? I think uh, one thing I've actually really realized is just as long as I'm having fun up on stage, you know, like people will like take that and see me and they'll want to have fun with me because they see me just going nuts up on stage playing my favorite music and it's like that feeling is something that I'm always just trying to extend and like give back to people because it's like that's why I do it you know it's just to have fun and I love music and that's what makes it so good you know I mean like I said I I don't go to a lot of dances but when I'm in there I'm, I'm having a really good time so that's the important part the last time I think I had a really like I could feed it was definitely when, when Teddy Lloyd was here for that one performance. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. Really yeah, that was a really good one, yeah. Uh, dance music, now, and the thing is people always think like dance music is just you know, the oomph, 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 you know, all the time, but there's complexities and layers expressing emotions and passions, be it death, sadness, um, then joy and happiness. So like uh, one of, more like Marshmallow with uh, one of his songs that reminds me of that recently, 
is, you know, it's the sadness part, but also coming to grips with it. So how do you guys make sure that, you know, you also in your own, in your own music, you're able to express yourselves? Who wants to talk about expressing themselves with their own music? All right, cool. So this is a, yeah, Jetta is actually a fairly like recent project. So I used to be known as Hasmatic, um, but Jetta was kind of just a way for me to, you know, like, um, I wanted to find something that really like resonated with me. Uh, so I kind of making music wise, whenever, you know, I go through any kind of life moment or anything like that, music is the best way to, you know, put that on paper or, you know, or a screen or something like that, or just, you know, kind of express it in that way. Um, if you're feeling down, you're going to mess with like, you know, minor keys, sadness, stuff like that. But also I make dubstep. <laughs> so most of it's very dark, evil stuff like that. Um, which I kind of want to switch sometimes. Sometimes dubstep can be super fun and happy and uh, stuff like that. So you just gotta, you really, yeah, it's, it's smart to, you know, mess with emotions and stuff like that, so. Um, so I was like a music theory nerd when I was in college um, and sort of since then, um, I've sort of grown my taste in music uh, regarding electronic stuff to focus more on these melodic uh, genres, um, melodic layering, playing with different chords, different moods, really trying to evoke those emotions that you're talking about, whether it's happiness, whether it's upbeat, whether it's sad, mixing them together, showing that kind of recovery from uh, you know, a dark place. Um, my favorites that I listen to uh, when I'm just driving around, when I'm just hanging out, have all been that. Um, Box Plot, actually, and San Holo, um, Lax, um, just, just lots of people who really are like putting chords on chords on chords. You got three different instruments doing totally different melodies on top of each other, like really creating these complex um, uh, vibes, <laughs> for lack of a better word. But really, like, uh, you know, it, it demonstrates the complexity of emotion, of what it is to be human, of what it is to go through different things in life. And when I play things live, I try to focus a lot on. Uh, sort of exposing people to that kind of music that really inspires me and makes me feel a lot of stuff. I want people to feel things yeah. in my crowds. So, yeah. Anyone else? Uh, I think the big thing for me is, like, my music taste is all about, like, feeling good at the end of the day. Like, I play a lot of disco house. I'll play a lot of, like, uplifting garage tracks recently. And it's, like, if the music isn't making me happy and making me feel good, like that's what I want to play because I want others to feel that exact emotion, you know? And that's really the big underlying theme for me. Lately, I've been listening to, like, so much Peary and Tommy just because, like, their music is just so fun and so danceable and it's, like, it's so good. So, I mean, as long as you're okay with, like, the perspective of someone who's kind of, like, semi-retired and not actually DJing at this thing. But, um, yeah, I noticed that, like, a lot of times, like, crowds are, are mostly just looking for, like, you know, party, party, party music for stuff like this, which is awesome. Uh, I, I notice for me, whenever I try to put some of the, like, the slower, more emotional things, um, it's usually, like, at the opening or, like, right at the end, just to kind of, like, have, like, this emotional start or, like, this emotional, like, conclusion to everything. And, um, yeah, sometimes, like, I'll, I'll like, with, we're, with us talking about, sem like, sem uh, separation. You can sometimes do like vocals from a more emotional song in, into a track. There are honestly a lot of like Vocaloid songs or even just Japanese dance songs that will have like this super duper happy beat and then you dig into the lyrics and it's like oh that's really sad actually. It's like but just don't worry about it. Uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of that. In K-pop, yeah. The lyrics are all like good, and then you look in the, the Korean lyrics, and you're like, "Oh, this is bad stuff." Right? <laughs> it's like I'm dancing, but please help me. This is um, so yeah, Sadness. right, a hundred percent, yeah. And then like, I know for me, like in, in terms of like bringing emotion, am I talking too long? I don't know. Okay, okay. Um, like for me, like with emotion and stuff, uh, some people have brought them up a lot, but like. Uh, I went to, I remember I went to like a, a Madeon and Porter Robinson show. I saw in a comment somewhere that they called him Protein Ribosome, and that's been his aim ever since for me. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Uh, but like, that was honestly like kind of a life changing experience for me because it kind of showed like this, this blending of, of EDM of like all kinds of emotions and styles. 
that was kind of blended with and synced with like the, the entire visual spectacle of it. And that was kind of the reason why I went into like, why I looked into visuals as well. So that's also like a, a factor that plays into it, but that was mostly a rant, but there's a lot of ways that you can approach it pretty much. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Alrighty, now this is kind of gonna be a little bit of a fun question. If you could go and work on a project with the original composer of a song, who would it be and why? And if you guys all just want to answer that, that's fine. If you just want to make it one or two people, that's great, too. Uh, all right. A dingus, point, a dingus pointed out. So we'll start over here and work our way over there. No, no, no. If you could work on a song in any genre with the original song creator, who would that be? I mean, if you guys want to do the whole, do you guys want to do the whole group? No, it doesn't matter what genre, doesn't matter what year, doesn't matter if it's like, I don't care what music you guys want to do. So if, like, if you wanted to go work with Mozart, like, you know, like I'm saying, like, you can go through history, you can go through current, I don't care. Yeah. All right, so, and then kind of step a little forward for yourself. Uh, so for, for me, what, what immediately came to mind is uh, an artist named Dirty Vegas who did a song called Days Go By back in the back in the 90s I, I think it came out or early 2000s that was it just happened to be one of the first techno songs that I heard or like house songs that pretty much exposed me to the world of like EDM and I've just been hooked ever since and I, I feel like to be able to go back and just be able to experience like the song making process with someone like that who had such a huge impact on my life because like it changed the trajectory of like where I've gone. That would be pretty big. <laughs> All right, I think I have it. Okay. <laughs> so I would love to go back and work with Fatboy Slim. Some 90s breakbeat. Honestly, um, his music videos are fun. I can't even imagine like production processing with him, like how much fun that would be, what the process looks like, especially back in that time period, yeah. not having modern technology, not being able to have like yeah. infinite amounts of layers and tracks and everything, but still coming out with fun, good sounding music that's really like, not super complex, but like musically interesting, you know, using the limited technology of the time. I think my answer would be uh, Hideki Naganuma, the composer of Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future. Oh, yeah. Like that game, like really just influenced so much of my life, and like that soundtrack is just forever goaded. You know, like I'd love to work with him. And he's hilarious. He's obsessed with Family Guy. Like, he's um, so <laughs> it's a hard question, right? Because like, if I'm gonna work with someone on music, I feel like there's gotta be chemistry. You gotta know the person. You gotta be good friends. Like, you know, I pointed at Ian, but I also just met Ian. Ian is one of my favorite musicians to listen to, but like there's gotta be there's gotta be chemistry, you know, there's gotta be a connection. And I feel like Julian and I really have that. I feel like Andrew and I would be pretty compatible as producers, as creators. Just I've known them a long time. We like a lot of the same music, we like a lot of the same things in music. Um, in like an ideal world, if there was somebody and that's just like you're automatically gonna mesh with them, you guys are totally gonna pump something out amazing, then like, yeah, uh, I don't know, Maddie on Porter Robinson. Box plot, San Holo, um, probably those four. Yeah. Just a big feely. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a big feely. I like feelings. <laughs> feelings make life good. <laughs> I've been waiting this question for my entire life. Um, this is this is my moment right here. I have, but it's ready. 2015 Bro Step Skrillex. That's it. Oh, okay. That's all I have to say. Sonny, please. Yeah. Sonny Moore. <laughs> um, ever since I tried to learn piano back in, two, you know, when I was seven, up until now, I think my favorite artist slash musician slash legend is Freddie Mercury. Yeah. So, um, not just any single song. I would just love to be where they were when they were writing all their musics. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, also we share the same birthday, so. <laughs> cool. uh, I think for me, uh, it have to. It's it's probably two. It's one is probably Easy Fun. Um, really love what they do and like what they've done with PC music. Um, and I think another would be Taku Inoue. 
who's done a lot of work for the Tekken soundtracks. Um, amazing, like melodics work from him but yeah those are people i'd love to work with at at any point it'd be awesome what you got i got one oh, yeah. i finally got one uh i think i think definitely jaco pistorius rest in peace and mozart i think those are good ones <laughs> yeah yeah that would be pretty cool. yeah. i'll keep mine short this time toby fox okay oh, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, this has been awesome. So I have a real quick thing. Uh, where can we follow you guys online? You guys can all now shout yourselves out again in line, or you can start over there. We can go this way. So where, do you, where can we find you guys online? So if we want to hear the wonderful music you made for Matsuricon, we can hear more of it. Who wants to go first? All right, so you guys go ahead, step in front there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, at Tetracase on all platforms, right? Yeah. At yeah. Te and Tetracase Music on Instagram, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see us there. Got new music on the way, kind of. I don't know. Yeah, we do. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> hey, so I'd say like uh, look for either Mesmerist on Spotify or Apple Music or Title or whatever you wherever you listen to music. I'm also Mesmerist Music on SoundCloud. M E R. That's wrong. M E S M E R I S T M U S I C. On SoundCloud, I actually have like a um, a Neon Genesis Evangelion remix coming out in less than two weeks that I'm actually really excited for. Uh, Jace was nice enough to play it last night, so that was pretty fun. And then outside of that, if you want me to see me make like one tweet or one Instagram post like every six months, you can uh, go to We Are Mesmerist uh, on either of those places. Uh, my music uh, is just called Ralphington. It's literally in every uh, music streaming platform. I just found out too, my music is getting streamed in China and Korea. I think that's wild. Um, but yeah, everything's just Ralphington. My socials is just Ralphington, except for Instagram, it's just Ralphington Music. So I did mention that uh, Jetta is like a new project, so I'm still working on a lot of new pro like new songs, things like that. Um, but it's Jetta underscore music on all socials, so yeah. Uh, I am pretty much just on Mixcloud as a dinga. Um, you can find me on Facebook, but like I really have not been super active with music lately, focusing on work. Um, but uh, yeah, those are my pages: Facebook and Mixcloud. Just a dinga, A D I N G A. You can find me on SoundCloud.com slash DJ underscore Retox and at Instagram at Retox EDM ninety three. <laughs> Hey, so I am on YouTube, SoundCloud, MixCloud as Escher Music. I haven't put out any finished songs in a while because finishing a song is hard. But I talked to this guy last night, and I think that you gave me some inspiration to finally work on finishing something rather than starting 100 things. So, yes. <laughs> and uh, you can find me on Instagram at Descent900. I have a link tree there to all the rest of my socials. I want to thank you guys all so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you so much.